What's going on, Tiny Boat Nation? I've been waiting for this Gator Glide stuff to get to my doorstep. It, I talked to the guy, he said it was delayed a little bit, so we're looking at sometime this week where we'll be able to get that and apply that. But right now it's crunch time. Still working through this heat. It's really screwed up a lot of things for me. It's delayed a lot of things to me, but I still got a lot of content that I can push out to you. So this is a little bit more of the Lund. So stay for it. So the subfloor was its own tedious task, but it was done. And I'm really happy with the results because it laid the nice foundation for everything that's about to come. And because I'm tired of using a standard rivet gun and my hands hurt, I bought a Milwaukee Riveter M12, best thing I ever did. And to top it off, this is a Rubbermaid 14 gallon brew box. I really like these because for one, they're low profile. They're wide, but low profile. They have like the wideness of a 17 gallon tough box, but they have the low profile. So they just fit better in the boat. I have these in my Smokercraft and I have, I've made pretty much all my live wells in the past recent boat builds off of this one. And the major thing is the lid itself has an indent that if you cut it out, it makes a perfect catch lip. It's like a drop in live well, it's perfect. I have these in my store, by the way. Placing the live well on the side here is was a choice of mine because that's where the initial live well was, but I could have placed it center mass with similar, if not better results, just FYI. It'll be fine here. We are sticking the fluorite pump out aerator combo and everybody's kind of been flagging me about where to find those. They can't find them on the site. I think fluorite finally fixed its site so you can find them. I'll put the link down below if you need them. They're also securing right here. That's the inlet pump nozzle. And that one's running all the way back to the inlet pump in the back. I chose to put an Atwood 800 GPH pump here for the actual research. And that'll go right in the side. So we're just looking for spots to actually put it feasibly so it'll fit and it'll still be crammed in and we can still run the, the chill mod right next to it. And for this boat, we bring back the famous chill mod. And we're using a five gallon Commander top box for this one. We're making a base, a solid base that it can sit on because we're gonna have to run the drain port directly in the base and for it to actually free float and be okay, it's gonna need a pretty strong foundation. I used a step down bit to fit this perfectly. So when you push the hose in, it pressure fits into that hole with like a perfect circle. So when you go to seal it, you're not gonna be worried about any water pouring out because this is a chill mod. Ice will be going in there and water will be collecting. So five gallons will be more than enough considering that would probably hold a 10 pound bag of ice and that'll be holding enough drinks and everything and still be able to cool the water down a few degrees. So the water will hold more oxygen as the live well circulates. And to get all this foam, when we initially gutted the stuff floor, CJ and I, we smelt something down there and there it was, saturated foam. That's the little last little bit of it, but we pulled about 50 pounds worth of saturated foam out of the bottom. So we put a little bootleg pipe down there to try and channel the water from the very, very base of the pit all the way through. But that's the worst spot to pour pour foam all the way down in there. Cause that's the spot where all the water will collect cause that's the spot where right before the V tapers. So it's either gonna collect right there or in the back. So here we are trying to figure out what we're gonna do. Cause we're gonna put a tote right there and that's gonna be the main stove for all the tackle and everything else that he wants to keep dry. At this point in my venture for boat building, my framing styles, I've just, I've done away with most of them. I've stuck with Gen 5 and Gen 3.2 Retro. Those are the only two that I'm gonna use. And those are actually, this frame is a hybrid of both of those. Coming in, we're using the Gen 3.2 Retro for all the spots here. So we saws all that little bootleg pipe out and we're gonna put an actual subfloor because the rest of the boat has a subfloor. It makes no sense for that part to not have a subfloor so the water can channel out and go all the way out to the bilge. But to do that is gonna change the whole thing dramatically. We're gonna to have to make the dry hatch bulletproof. Normally I just run it in sections so it has four large gaps in each corner to offset the water flow into the hatch and then that's actually really good. So I haven't actually done anything like this since my 16 foot John boat, but because of how we're gonna pour the foam in and how we're gonna lay everything in, we're going to have to run tubes through the foam into the bottom of that little subfloor we're making. And to do that, we're gonna braze. This is 3 fourths by 1 16th inch aluminum tubing onto a piece of aluminum sheet metal that we brazed around. Gave a pretty generous brazing. And this works really well 
to offset dry hatches if you're going to run tubes. The bracing holds pretty well. It's no, it's not welding, but I tell you for just simple applications like this where there's no low bearing structure, it works fantastic at bonding it way better than any sort of epoxy. Perfect for what we need to do. But before we can even apply those, we actually have to make the dry hatch lip. In order to pull this whole thing off, we're gonna have to make some moss to the front wall. So we cut it out so the tote would fit. But we kept the sides because they're inherently useful for when we pour foam in to actually trap it in there. And also to run the, the rod locker tubes through the right side. And there's a subfloor. We're gonna have to seal that subfloor off in order for the foam to not seep into it. We're gonna have to draw the holes for the tubes to go in anyways. So let's get all that done now and seal those tubes in. So when we pour the foam, it'll all be good. None of it will actually go down there and collect and rot and saturate with water ever again. Now that I have this done, I have to tie in the rod locker tubes because if I don't do it now, it'll cause me problems later because I have to have the tubes in there before I pour from it. And because I want them to not chip off eyes, we're going to flange it. I'm just using a beer bottle. Flange them in there after I heated it enough with a torch. But uh, a good buddy of mine, Nate, which I'll be demoing his boat soon, told me to use a bottle and a heat gun, which works substantially better in the torch and it doesn't actually singe anything. You can get a nice heat gun at Harbor Freight, by the way, and you can also get this whole saw kit at Harbor Freight, or you can get it on my store. Uh, these are bi-metal dual wood slash metal hole saws. And we're giving it a pretty good spacing, about a two inch spacing between each tube. That makes for a pretty good rod locker. The rod locker in my smoker craft is definitely the best well-fit rod locker that I've had, so I try to mimic it back here. It's not quite as wide, but it is almost there. It's pretty damn close. And we're gonna get a good eight rods out of this in a very well-fit section. We had to seal the little section off in here because after we put the tubes in and we seal them, we're going to put pour foam all up in there and that will give it additional flotation since we cut a, a pretty big part of that bench out to stick the dry hatch tote there. We have all our fittings where we need to for the live well and the chill mod. We are going to end up running the pump out uh, through hole fitting right there because the other one is gigantic and right at this point useless. Now we got to do the side rail. So if you wanted a really in-depth side rail thing and wondering how we're going to do them, this is where you can see it. The first four feet of this boat taper up and they taper pretty dramatically. They don't actually line with the subfloor. So if you have to angle parts of your deck up slightly to make the whole thing work so your boat doesn't sag all the way in, that's fine. Even at the, the slight taper up with this, as we run it, we still have a really high wall. Like it's close to a foot or maybe even a foot for the wall. So you really just have to have an eye for it. Um, don't follow the bench seats. That's not a good idea. You have to start from the back, work your way up. That way you know when it's gonna start tapering and you can offset it the way your deck lays out straight. Right here, if we just kept going straight with that bench, we'd be in problems. We have to angle it down to get it good for the rest of the whole deck. Another way I found 
to strengthen 1 16th inch framing is adding that little cross section right there underneath any major joints with your frame. Stiffens it up dramatically, eliminates the sag because 1 16th aluminum will eventually start to sag and it's terrible when it does that. So doing that initially at any point of your joints, we have those throughout the entire frame and it is very stiff, very strong. You can't even tell it's 1 16th. Stay tuned for the next episode because it only gets better from here.